I'm just going to stand over here and not even respond. <laughs> All right, Tristan, just for you. Welcome to worship here at Epworth. Glad you joined us this morning. I know we've got a lot of people traveling, a lot of people out today. Hey, but we're going to make it a great day anyway. If you would, if you're watching us online or on our Channel 6, would you please notify us? Let us know on your Facebook Live or your YouTube feed. Just put your name in there. Say hi. That way we can count your attendance that way. If you're watching on Channel 6, make sure you call the office during the week so we can register your attendance that way. Here in the congregation, make sure you take a little blue card that's in the seat back in front of you, one for, per family. Put it in the offering plate when it comes by later on today. If you're watching us online and you want to follow along in the bulletin, you can go to our website. Down at the bottom, you'll find a link that has a bulletin on there. And you can download the bulletin and follow along with us this morning as we begin our worship service. As we begin our worship service, make sure that you put everything in the world behind you. And let's do what God calls us to do. And that is to worship God with our heart, mind, and soul as we begin our worship service this morning. Good morning. If you will please stand and join me in singing our hymn of praise, We Gather Together. Please remain standing for our call to worship found in your bulletins or on the screen as we read this responsively this morning. God, without your care, I go astray. God, hold your child close and stay with me through both pain and pleasure. God, we ask with expectant hope that you listen to our prayers. Into endless day. If you will remain standing for our songs and praise and worship this morning, starting with Love Never Fails.
you to remain standing as you're able for the reading of our gospel lesson this morning. We're looking at John's gospel today, and uh, in the 18th chapter, this is, this is uh, Jesus had just been handed over uh, to the authorities. He had uh, had the Last Supper, uh, the, uh, uh, the authorities came and arrested him at the garden, and now he is standing before Pilate, and Pilate is, is questioning him. And so we pick up uh, the story as John tells it in the 18th chapter at the 33, at the 33rd, at the 33, at the 33rd verse. And, um, and I'll be reading again, as I did last week, from the New Revised Standard Version. The, the words uh, from the CEB will be on the screen. Uh, but just a little bit of a nuance uh, uh, difference here. Beginning in the 33rd verse, and Pilate entered the headquarters again and summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? 
Jesus answered, do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? And Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? And Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. And Pilate asked him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. For this I was born. And for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. You may have a seat. And as you're taking your seats, we'll invite our youngsters to the front for our time together. You got a doll with you, don't you? I'm going to put you on this leg right there, all right? And here comes, it was somebody's birthday this week, wasn't it? It was yours? How old are you? I know. You're free, right? You're free. Yeah, all right. I like it. I like it. And you know how I know that? Because somebody, somebody told the whole world that. Yes, Facebook, it's Facebook's fault. It's Facebook's fault. So, good morning. Good morning. Oh, pretty good, pretty good. I like it. You all look good today. You know, it, it's going to be Thanksgiving this week. Have you been, have you been dieting? No. No? We already had Thanksgiving. You already had Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Are you going to have another one? No. Did you eat lots of turkey? Yes. Did you eat? No, you don't like turkey? It's weird. She likes chicken, but she doesn't like turkey. Did, did you eat dressing? Yeah. I, I was going to do a cranberry salad. That's because cause you're, cause you're weird, right? Yeah. Yeah, not really, not really. So, and you had dessert? No. No? Only the grown-ups did. Only the grown-ups did. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, am I going to talk about some grown-ups <laughs> eating, eating the desserts for the kids? Uh, oh, come on. We got, we got to get you all sugared up and then try to get you down to bed. All right. Well, I'm glad that you all are here, all of you. You look good today. Uh, so, all right, Miss Birthday Girl, let's have the mystery bag. Is there something in there? She told you, or you, or you got it out of her? She, she told us. She told you. Yeah, and we felt it. <clears throat> so you already know, huh? Yeah. All right, so we're going we're gonna to let, we're gonna let this side of the... Of it's the, a puzzle. You think it's a puzzle? All right. Actually, it's, it's either a puzzle or a bird. It's a camera. A camera. A camera? <laughs> a camera? <laughs> it's a camera. I know. No. It's a puzzle. It's a camera. It's, it's a, a camera. camera. It's a camera. It's obviously a camera. I heard it's obviously. It's a, a camera. Uh, yeah. It's not a camera. It's a phone. What is it? It's a phone. What? Well, what? How? Oh, I remember because I put this and it made the camera sound. Well, it kind of is a camera. Wait. It kind of is a camera, but it does other things. You were right and wrong. All right, so somebody's calling. So she, she got it. How, how did they know to call you on that phone? Oh, now it's busy signal. All right, so, um, so is, that your, is that your phone? Yeah? Do you talk to people? Do you, do you make phone calls? Let me see. Do you make phone calls? 
What do you call? Ghostbusters? Yeah, you call Ghostbusters? So, uh, so a lot of people, oh, you here, let me hold, let me hold the doll. All right, so, all right, so we got, all right. So, um, so do you, do, do you have a phone, a cell phone? Do you have a cell phone? Yes, you do. Do you have cell phones? Do you have a cell phone? No. Um, you have two phones because, because, oh, people, important people have two phones because lots of people call them, right? Only, only important people call, have two phones. Uh, I'm not important. I just have one, and I don't use mine very well. I am very not important. You're very not important? Well, I but have you have zero phones. Hey, yo, that's all right. I, I, could, I can deal with that. Sometimes phones can be, can be difficult. Uh, people, sometimes people call you when you don't want to talk when, when, when you have phones. Sometimes, but sometimes you need one. Sometimes you need to, you need to make phone calls. But, but you can take pictures, right? You can take pictures, and you can play games, but you wouldn't know because you don't have one. <laughs> Actually, I do know because I use my friend's phone. Oh, okay, all right. So, so, so sometimes you can play games, and, and sometimes you can take pictures, and sometimes you can do your banking because you do all your banking on your mobile phone, right? Uh, no. You don't have no. a phone. And, and, sometimes, and sometimes you can check... Uh, you can check your email, right? You can check your email with your phones. You can do all kinds of things. Those are handy things to have uh, in your pocket. Uh, they're also a little bit inconvenient, but uh, that keeps us connected. It keeps phones keep us connected to what's going on uh, in the world. Uh, to keeps us connected to our families. Keeps us connected to to moms and dads when they need to get a hold of us. Keeps us connected. Uh, with friends, keeps us connected uh, with the news. We can check the news, see the weather. If you need to, if you need to put on a raincoat, or if you need to wear short pants, right? Right, because it's hot, but not right now. It's cold right now. All right. So, uh, phones can keep us connected, and 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 that's pretty neat. One of the things, one of the things that that we do when we gather. Uh, together here is we connect. We stay connected. Uh, we stay connected with each other in places like this, face-to-face. Uh, -face. We have conversations. We look each other in the eye, right? And, and we have conversations, but we stay connected with God uh, when we get to places like this. And when, when, we, when we sit in this room, when we sit in this room, we sing songs and we pray prayers, right? And, and that's a way of uh, one way of communicating with, with God. We stay connected with God that way. Does this mean I'm not connected to people? Huh? Does this mean I'm not connected to people? No, you're connected. See? Uh, there you go. You're connected on both sides there. All right. And, um, and, 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 and so we get connected with God. We, we read the Bible. That connects us with the stories. And, and the stories connect us with all the other people uh, who have read those stories, who have told those stories, who, who've, uh, who've preached, who've taught, who've, who've learned. Uh, it connects us with people throughout history, across all the miles, around the world. That's amazing, right? We're connected. We're connected in a, in a special way by our faith. And, uh, and, and, that's, and that's a source of strength and encouragement for us. So, so uh, I want you to remember that next time, next time you use your phone, when you get a phone, when you get a phone, next time you get a phone or see somebody using a phone, they're connected. And we, we can remember that we're all connected to each other by the, by the love of God through Jesus Christ. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Thank you, birthday girl. For, for sharing your phone. All right, let, let's, let's give our phone back to her. All right, and uh, we're going to say a prayer, and then we're going we're gonna to talk about what we do next week, okay? So let's say a prayer. Let me, God, you call us uh, to yourself. You draw us to yourself. We are yours, and you connect with us in special and powerful ways. When we read scripture, when we pray, when we sing, our beautiful songs, when we are with people uh, who worship. 
But God, you also connect us uh, to all, all those people you love throughout history, even those that we don't know. That is, that is um, difficult sometimes for us to uh, consider. But it just shows your great love for all people. And we thank you for that. God, I thank you for these kids, for the homes they come from, for the way that you are growing in them. We pray, God, as they go through this week, you will let the world see them in you and you in them. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, now, here, real quick, next week. Do you know what next week is? Yep. You don't know what next week is? Uh, it's Sunday. Next, uh, uh, a week from today will be Sunday. You're right. Uh, but on the church calendar, uh, the church has, has a unique calendar. It starts the first day of what? Christmas Advent. Uh, Advent. You're right. Absolute. Good job. Good job. Advent is the season of uh, preparing for getting ready for the birth of Jesus, getting ready for Christmas, right? And, and you know what, we've, what we have done uh, in the last few years? We're gonna, we're gonna, you guys are going to get to build the nativity scene. We're going to add pieces every week. Oh, no. oh yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to do that. Yeah. Well, there, we're, and, and, and the wise guys are going to probably uh, uh, be, be uh, making their journey. So you're going to have to start looking for the wise guys. They're not, they're not, they're not close yet, but they're going to they're gonna be on the road. No, not on my head. Not on my head. But, uh, but we're going to do all that. So here's what I'm going to do. I promised you the mystery bag, didn't I? Did I promise you the mystery bag? All right, so here's, here's what I want. All right, I want you to remember, and you help me remember. All right, I'm putting it on you. We're go we're gonna, I'm going to hang on to the mystery bag for the next, for the next four weeks. Because we're, go we're going we're gonna to build, build the nativity. You guys are going to build it. You're going to help me tell the story. You're going to tell the story, right? And we're going to find the wise guys. Then after Christmas, first Sunday after Christmas, we're going to go back to the mystery bag. Are you a wise guy? I'm a wise guy. Wow. All right. All right. Is that cool? Can we do that? Is that cool? No? No? We can do that. All right. All right. All right. So that's what we'll do. You get it first Sunday after Christmas. All right. All right. Now then, let's go. We're good. Oh, we prayed already. You want to pray again? You go ahead. <coughs> Yeah, you don't get it. You just get to hang on to it. <clears throat> you just get to hang on to it. All right. All right. Let's pray. Mm. Pour your spirit out on this place, oh God. And grant us eyes to see you, ears to hear you, hearts to love you, and let us see and hear and love all that you love. Speak to us, we pray, in these moments. And allow your servant to stand in the shadow of the cross. So that the words that I speak are not mine but yours. And the words that are heard are not mine but yours, O oh God. And transform us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So one of the things that we do when we gather here every week is we read a passage out of this book. Um, different translations from time to time, but, but, but we read this, or I read, and, and, and you listen. Hopefully, hopefully some of you are reading along on the words on the screen, or you've got your Bibles out with you, and, and, and you read along with me. And, um, and I believe many of you also uh, read that book at home. 
And, um, and, and we read that because it's important, right? And, and, and so, so we, take, we, we take the words of the Bible seriously. And, and if we take the words of the Bible seriously, and I believe that we do, uh, especially uh, the words that, that, we, that we ascribe to, to Jesus, the words that uh, uh, Jesus speaks, the teachings of Jesus, if we take the Bible seriously in those words, then, then, then we understand, we understand, at least I believe we understand, that, that the lessons uh, that, that God intends we learn from the words that we read in the Bible do not always align with the culture or the society in which we live. We understand that. And, and, and some might even go so far as to say that the lessons uh, that we read, the teachings that we read uh, in the Bible um, are, are, are radical. But even so, and, and I say that sometimes. I, I, have, I have said that, that, that sometimes uh, what we read in Scripture is, is pretty radical. Even so, um, the longer that I, that I do this, I'm in my 20, 22nd, 23rd year, whatever. Uh, the longer that I do this, uh, the more I'm convinced um, that, that, that we, I'm dragging you in this with me, that I, <laughs> that, that I, sometimes miss the more radical nature and message of our Lord. And, 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 and I believe that, that, that I miss uh, uh, the radical, the very radical uh, nature of what Jesus teaches, uh, and I think others miss it too, um, is, is not so much because uh, it, it's subtle or hidden, but rather because uh, it, it, it's challenging. We, 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 we don't like to be challenged. It, sometimes it makes us uncomfortable, and so we, we choose to, to set it aside or, 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 or not wrestle with it maybe as much as, as we should. And it occurs to me that, that if, if, I have, if I have missed um, the, the, the radical nature of the message of Jesus, then it's very likely that I also have failed to extend an invitation to people like you to enter into a very real and profound conversation with what Scripture says about how provocative Jesus was then and continues to be now. Today's the last day of the year on the church calendar. And so it's a catch-up day uh, for that. It, it's, it's the day that the church sets aside every year to celebrate uh, the reign of, of, of Christ. Uh, Christ the King Sunday is what we call it sometimes. And it's, it's, it's um, the day we celebrate uh, the reign of Christ, the same Christ of Scripture, uh, the one that we call uh, Jesus, the one who uh, we believe rules the kingdom of heaven. And on this day, as the last day, it's appropriate, more than appropriate, I think, uh, to wrestle with this provocative message, this provocative uh, nature, the, the radicalness of, what, of who Jesus is and, and what Jesus uh, says and teaches, the, uh, the, the radicalness of, of, uh, of the one that we, that we profess our loyalty and our faith to. And in our reading today from John's gospel, I think is an example, it's a great example of what I'm talking about in, in, in my missing the point sometimes. Like many of you, I have read uh, this familiar passage. I've, I've read it many times. I, I, can, almost, I can almost speak it verbatim uh, from memory. But this past week, as I have read and reread uh, one particular verse 
uh, in, in fact, something occurs to me, and, 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 and it occurs to me that I think I have misinterpreted or per, perhaps even, even missed the, the central message altogether of, uh, of this passage. And, and I wonder if times, if I'm not alone. And, 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 here's, and here's, here's the verse. Pilate asked, has just asked Jesus, what have you done? And Jesus replies, Jesus answers, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from here. For most of my life, at least the part of my life when I seriously consider uh, the words of Scripture, I have read these words from Jesus uh, asserting uh, that, that neither Pilate nor those who handed him over to Pilate, uh, not, even, not even the mighty Roman Empire itself, had any power at all over Jesus. They could not control him. They could not determine his fate. And if we go back just, just a few chapters in John's gospel, Jesus even says as much. In the 10th chapter, um, uh, Jesus, Jesus says, No one takes my life from me. I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I, I have the power to take it up again. The implication is uh, that, 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 we, that, that we have uh, always interpreted, or that I've always interpreted this as, is, is that Jesus' kingdom is otherworldly. It, it's, it's up there, out there, somewhere. And, and when we read this, we, we have been taught, I have been taught, and, and, and I have taught others to think, if this conflict were happening in his up there, out there, somewhere kingdom, then, then his followers would fight. But since it is happening in this world, this earthly kingdom, a, a, a place that cannot hold him, a uh, place that not, cannot control him, uh, he won't get involved, and neither will his followers. I mean, that, that, that's, that's a pretty, that, that's the way I've, I've, I've always looked at and understood and thought about this passage. And, and I've instructed folks, I've taught folks, I've preached that way, and perhaps that's the way many of you have heard it and understand that passage. But what if, what if that isn't what Jesus means at all? Or, or, or more precisely, what if I have been misreading and misinterpreting this passage entirely? What, 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 if, what if Jesus, in, in, in this conversation with Pilate, what if Jesus is saying something like this? What, what if Jesus is saying to Pilate, I'm not from this world, but I'm from the kingdom of heaven. And in the kingdom of heaven, the normal order of, of, of things, the, the normal way of doing things, the way of doing life together is very, very different than it is from here. In, in this world, in this earthly world, in this place that, that you've got kind of control and power over, in this world, the primary tool for establishing and keeping power is violence. Remember, Jesus is about to get, he, he's, been, he's been arrested, he, he's about to get beaten up and, and crucified. In this world, the primary tool for establishing and keeping power is violence. But that is not the way of the kingdom of heaven. 
Think about this. Jesus will not use the ways of this world at this particular moment in time because he has never used the ways of this world at any point in his ministry. In, in, in fact, Jesus teach, prays and, and teaches his followers to pray, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus, Jesus teaches us to pray that things will become as they are in heaven. Not of this world, but of that world. Jesus will not defend himself through violence. Jesus will not usher in a God's kingdom by violence. Jesus will make no followers through violence. Even at this darkest moment in his earthly life, Jesus is saying, this, me acting in violence, even to defend myself, this is not the way of heaven, and I will not do that here and now, and neither will my followers. Mm. Jesus came Jesus came to witness to the truth and that truth is that God is love but even and and and, and the biblical uh, narrative the witness tells us that, that even when God shows up it's difficult for people like us sometimes to recognize God we don't know how to respond and, and so, and so we do what comes natural to us. We, 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 we fall back on what we do know. We fall back on what we do recognize. We, we construct narratives based on what we have experienced in our own lives. So rather than imagining, which is very difficult for a lot of people to do, rather than imagining that God is love, we imagine God to be violent because we live in a world full of violence. Jonathan Edwards wrote one of the great sermons of all time. I think he's wrong. Sinners in the hands of an angry God. Rather than recognize that the, the cross as being a symbol of sacrificial love, we assume that the cross is this legal mechanism of punishing Jesus in our place. And we do this because for us it's easier, it's easier to punish than to try to understand. It's easier to punish than to reconcile. It's easier to punish than it is to love. Folks, I think, I think we have way, way, way too much experience with punitive relationships. For rather than, than believe uh, that, that God's grace and acceptance are absolutely unconditional, we assume even, even if it's in our minds, we assume that God offers love and power and status only on the condition that, that we fear and obey and praise God. That, 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 we, that we despise those who don't. That we, that we reject those who don't. So much of our life is lived Quid pro quo. Even, even in faith. And we have always done this. Individuals and groups and governments and nations have always exerted control and imposed their way and fought to maintain power through violent means. And those who struggle to resist 
also fight using violence. And sometimes, sometimes we find ourselves embroiled in a fight and, and we don't even know why except, except that our enemy is not like us. They're, they're different from us. They're unknown from us. And, and therefore, the, if, they're, if they're not like us, they've got to be, they gotta be, they gotta be bad. Maybe, maybe they're even unholy. But Jesus is not from this world. And his followers, that's us, his followers will not fight for him because to bring the kingdom of heaven to this place, it, it, to bring the kingdom of heaven about by using violence is to violate the very principles that this kingdom is established on. To use violence to bring about the kingdom in this place, to bring about God's kingdom in this place, is to destroy God's kingdom. And we all know deep down that, that if, we, if we submit to the belief that the only answer to violence, well, it's more violence. And the end result of that way is only and always death. But Jesus is about life. I came to bring life. The kingdom of heaven is about life. Hmm. So now that my head hurts, does that, does that mean does that mean that Jesus is calling us all to be pacifist? There are certainly some traditions, uh, our, our friends that, that we know as Mennonites, our friends that we call Quakers, uh, have, have given powerful testimony uh, of, of Christian nonviolence. These courageous and countercultural witnesses have at times shaken the very powers of the world. They, 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 can, they cannot be, uh, their, their actions, their way of living cannot be easily or quickly discarded. I think, I think our Mennonite and Quaker sisters and brothers have something that we need to see and learn from. Other traditions... Other traditions have stressed uh, the importance and, and, and the necessity of and even God's ordaining of temporal authorities and, and, and the use of armies and law enforcement and, and the critical role that these organizations have in creating a more peaceful and orderly and just world. Even, even as we can all think of times when, when, those, when those organizations have not always uh, acted uh, in orderly or, or, or just ways themselves. Personally, I believe that perpetrators of violence, I believe that, that terrorists, however we might want to define that, and we all define those terms, I think, very, very differently. Personally, I think uh, perpetrators of violence should be uh, opposed vigorously. I think, I think we need to fight tirelessly uh, uh, to, to bring about justice whenever and wherever possible so that there is less violence and terrorism uh, in, in the world. Even, even as, and I say that even as I recognize, as I recognize that, that punishment alone cannot ever be the only option. We can't punish our way to peace. We've got to seek to understand. We've we, we got, we got, we got to make things right. As members of the church, as followers uh, of Jesus Christ, we, 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 we follow a very different kind of a king. We, we need to witness uh, uh, that there are limits and, and um, there, there are li limits to the reach of of force and the use of force. We need to, we need to proclaim that, that justice must be for all or there is no justice at all. 
And, and, and this too is a teaching of Scripture, and it's a very radical teaching of Scripture. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. wrote several years ago, the ultimate weakness of violence is that it is a descending spiral begetting the very thing it seeks to destroy. Instead of diminishing evil, violence multiplies it. Through violence, you may murder the liar, but you cannot murder the lie. Nor can you establish the truth. Through violence, you may, you may murder the hater, but you do not murder the hate. In fact, violence merely increases hate. Returning violence for violence multiplies violence, adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. So what, what, what does that mean for us? I wish I had an easy answer. Here's what I know. I know, I know that the world we live in today seems less safe for my children and my future grandchildren than the one in which I grew up. I know too that, that the one thing that we can do that is absolutely meaningful and powerful and transformational, not only for us but for the whole world, is that we continue to gather together in places like this to pray and to witness we, we, we gather to pray that God will comfort those who mourn. We, we pray that God will strengthen those who seek to, pro to provide safety and justice through their service. We, we pray that God will change the hearts of those who can see no other way forward but through violence. We pray that God will equip all of us to work for a peace born of equity, because that's the only kind of peace that will last. And, and then when we, when we pray, when we're, after our praying, we are called and we are sent, you and I, we are sent out to witness, to witness to the one who demonstrated power, real power through weakness, to witness to the one who embodied strength through vulnerability, to witness about the one who established justice through mercy. To witness to the one who built the kingdom of God by embracing a confused and a chaotic and, an, and a violent world and taking its pain into his body, dying the death it, that the world sought, and then rising up again to remind us that, that light is stronger than darkness and that love is stronger than hate and, and that with God, all things are possible. Because even, even though Jesus is not from this world, he most certainly is for this world. And we need him. And that, friends, is a radical radical message and it fits with everything that Jesus did and taught and it's more radical than is what we sometimes want to wrestle with but even so it is good news it is very good news and it's for you and it's for me and it is for all In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Almighty God. We struggle sometimes. Help us to be your people.
people. This is our prayer. We offer it in the name of the one who teaches us as he taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you will please stand and join me in singing our hymn of response, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. seated. Sorry about that. I was going to keep you all standing for a while. Next part of our worship <coughs> service is our offering time. I do want to draw our attention to our prayer list. It's on the back of the bulletin. Um, you'll find all of our uh, prayers that we are currently praying for there. Uh, good to see Susan back with us today after being in the hospital this week. So good to see her up and about. I know she wishes she could be up there with you all. Yes. But <laughs> so do I. It, it, it's hard to do that. But uh, I know a lot of people are dealing with sickness, too. I know colds are going around. I know a couple people with several people with colds. Clint back here in the back and Gina. And we got colds all over. So it's that time of season. So be in prayer for those who are uh, ailing that way as well. As we prepare for our offering today, let's pray. Father, as we come here today... Lord, we just give thanks and praise to you. 
We come here to worship you each and every Sunday. But we always know that we should worship you every day, every hour, and every minute in our hearts. Lord, as we prepare to give our offerings this morning, <coughs> Lord, we just give thanks and praise to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. You may have a seat. 
Today is also our uh, Commitment Sunday. Uh, we've, we've asked, we've got some uh, folks that have sent their pledge cards in the mail. We've had some others bring them uh, to the church uh, already and put them in the basket. If you have your pledge card with you and you have not yet um, uh, placed it in the basket, I want to invite you during the singing of our closing song to come forward and 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 place your, pre your pledge card uh, in, in the basket. If you've, if you've not filled yours out yet and, and have not yet um, uh, put it in the mail, you still have time to do that. I want to encourage you, invite you uh, to prayerfully consider uh, your commitment level and then get that back to the church office. Uh, we greatly appreciate that. But we want to we wanna receive uh, those that have come in, those that will be placed in the basket, and those that, that will uh, yet come in. We want to, uh, to offer uh, this dedication uh, and this uh, prayer of thanks uh, for all of that. So I invite you uh, to follow along in your bulletin. I believe uh, the litany will also be uh, on the screen. Uh, please respond at the bold print. Uh, your part, your response is the bold print. Almighty God in divine goodness uh, has, sent, has seen fit to call us together as a community of faith known as Epworth United Methodist Church. In our history of being God's people, we have known redemption and we have experienced blessing. We have received both forgiveness and grace. God has sent the Holy Spirit to guide us and equip us for our mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. When we strayed from his word, God has called us to return to him that we might continue to be blessed by his grace and favor. We are nothing without our God and his word of hope and promise. We give thanks for God, for your love, and for all that you have given us. Therefore, people of God, I invite you to commit yourselves and your whole lives to God and to his loving purpose for you and for us as Epworth United Methodist Church so that our lives may be enriched and the work of our hands be blessed and prosperous. We commit our For those, of you, for those whose lives have been touched by your spirit, who have increased their level of commitment, for those who are responding to your creative grace by pledging for the first time, for those who are tithing or even exceeding the tithe level, for those whose lives are in transition or turmoil and who feel they cannot pledge, but who continue to be a vital part of our community, for committee members, who have labored in this effort to enable your people to make a pledge of support for your church. We give thanks and pray to your Holy Spirit to continue guiding us and caring for us. Accept these pledges we commit to you today. May they be the first fruits of all we have, not what we have left over, so that we may live out as closely as possible how you give to us. May we see them as our offering to you, sacred, holy, yet earthly, and filled with possibilities. May they emerge as real gifts, enabling the mission and the ministry of Jesus Christ to move forward through this congregation and the church universal. May we see our very selves as being part of this offering. We make this commitment to you as living sacrifices in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you will stand and join me in singing our hymn of, our song of sending forth the blessing.
Good day. So glad you're here. You got some announcements. I got a lot of announcements. All right, let's, let's hit them. <laughs> We've got our schedule. You'll find it in your bulletin. Make sure you uh, take a look at all the things going on. Uh, we, your church offices is going to be closed on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We're going to have very fractured hours on Monday and Tuesday. As you may or may not know, Carol has been admitted to the hospital and is going to be having surgery this week, maybe today or, or tomorrow, tomorrow, rather. Tomorrow, I think. Tomorrow, tomorrow I think. Um, going to have gallbladder surgery, so hopefully uh, uh, she'll be out for a week or two, so we're going to have kind of weird hours for the church, but uh, our best is with her, of course. Um, we also have, um, let's see here, we got our Advent workshop coming up, Woohoo! that's coming up next Sunday, starting at 4.30 if I'm not mistaken, and then we'll have, after that, we'll have a short service afterwards, and then we'll, uh, we'll depart from there. Uh, let's see, what else we got? We got also Angel Tree. She is gone. How many angels did she say she had left, Jenny? Yeah. She is set up over here in the foyer. If you go out this way and catch her, you can catch her and get an angel and uh, take care of that. We're also going to have our first annual food drive and toy drive coming up. Uh, we need to have everything here probably by December the 10th. Also, thank you for everybody who gave to Operation Christmas Child and the shoe boxes. I think we ended up having 83. 80, yeah, 83. That broke our 50 goal, broke our 75 goal, got us to 83. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, poinsettias, sign-up sheet is in here. Make sure you fill that as well. I think it's done. Don't forget your ugly Christmas sweaters. That's coming yes. up. And we want to make sure, I've got to clarify... Sweaters. Sweaters. Not suits. Not shirts. Sweaters. Otherwise, we call it an ugly shirt contest. An ugly shirt contest. <laughs> that is coming up on December the 15th, if I'm not mistaken. The same yep. day we're doing our music program. So, All right. Okay. I think I, did I covered everything good. Okay. Very good. Don't, don't forget... You'll see this in your bulletin as well. We've got some of Epworth's own that are uh, deeply involved in this, Alyssa. Uh, and, and so you get an opportunity, that's December 5th, uh, 6th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. Uh, so uh, get your tickets and go and go see the musical Scrooge. Be, okay. a good, be, a good, be a good deal to go do. My nickname. You are. Bah yeah. Humbug. Bah Humbug. All right. <laughs> um, real quick, uh, some of you uh, have received an email uh, from me or purporting to be from me uh, asking you to be part of something where you send me money. Uh, that's not me. Uh, don't send me money or don't send whoever is acting like me money. That's a, that's a scam. I don't know what, what is going on, uh, but if you, get, if you get something that uh, says it's from me asking you for money, let me assure you, I will never, ever, ever, ever send you an email from my personal email address asking you to send me money uh, on the side, all right? But if you don't want to send it to him, you can send it to me. So, oh, all right, all right, <laughs> Scrooge. all right. That's your mama. <laughs> I know, I know. That, that's all. That's all good. Um, uh, next, next Sunday. Um, now, Sharon, I know Charla has said that you and her can get the big tree up, but if if there's a couple of gentlemen that would be willing to help get the big tree up, uh, that would that would certainly. Um, and when are we going to do that? We're go when are we going to do that, Sharon? Tomorrow? Tomorrow? Tomorrow, what time? So about 10:30, 11. If if anybody if anybody can be here that has a, I, I hesitate to say strong back and weak <laughs> mind, uh, but but can help, 
So uh, that, that, that would be appreciated. All right, anything else? You got anything? Y'all did great today. Very good, very good. You all did great today. Thank you for being here. For all those that are watching, we're glad that you have tuned in with us. Now, we're going to get ready and we're going to leave this place. We have gathered here. We have, we have sung. We have prayed. And now then we're sent. And we're sent out. We're sent out to be messengers of the kingdom of, of God. We're to, we're to invite folks to experience that. That's your task. So go be, so go, go be kingdom people out there. And then I want to invite you to come back next week. And when you come back, bring somebody with you. Oh, come on now. All right. <laughs> May the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ, his son, our Lord, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Amen. 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 Amen.